Lots of boobies. Let's get cutting. Real fabric. Yeah. I underestimate him. <laughs> G'day everyone and welcome to a new sewing vlog. Uh, I am doing something a little bit crazy because uh, Oz Comic Con is coming up in 12 days time and uh, although I have many cosplays, I have decided that I want to try and make a new cosplay for Oz Comic Con. So I have 12 days to make Jane Seymour from Six the Musical because those who don't know I am obsessed with Six the Musical. Like I saw it in Perth and then like three weeks later when we were in New York I saw it on Broadway. I would see it again in a heartbeat anywhere. I absolutely adore it. And Jane is definitely one of my favorite queens. I love them all um, but I have my, like my Four favorite, I suppose. I don't know. Five. I, I literally, I, <clears throat> I love them all. Uh, Anna of Cleves is definitely my favorite. However, Jane is probably my second favorite, and I think that her design is simple enough that I could possibly. <laughs> I don't know, I haven't con crunched in so long, uh, but possibly be able to make her in 12 days time. So I have got like little bits and pieces that I kind of already have. Um, so like these earrings I found this week and I was like, oh, I really like them. And um, yeah, they're very Jane. Uh, they are very close to the hooped earrings that she wears um, in the earlier renditions of her costume. Um, yes, I have done my research. Uh, I'm going to be making the latest version because I love the little like peplums. Um, so <clears throat> that th this is like the older version um, because I don't think I'm going to be able to find slash make her hooped earrings with the th the Roman numerals for um, three uh, on there. So yeah, just going to go with the white glittery silver hoops. Um, I have these two patterns which I'm going to kind of try and create something from. Uh, my idea is is that I'm going to do mock-ups today and tomorrow. Um, and then on Tuesday, I will go and I will uh, purchase fabrics if I can get the mock-ups done in time. That is the grand plan. Let's see if I can do it. I am really, as I'm saying that loud, I'm getting more and more stressed. So I'm just going to get cracking on it and hopefully uh, we can have something that I can work with. So yeah, I've got, I've got some sparkle fabric that would work it's just not enough to do the entire costume but i am going to take a swatch of that because if i can find the same fabric in home craft textiles because i think it's a pretty like it's a pretty similar one um then then that will just mean that i've already got some which is awesome keep the cost down it's where you can <laughs> all right let's get cracking all right, so here is the mock-up in its first initial stages. So I do need to uh, cut off a little bit of extra length on in the arms. Uh, I've just tucked it in for now. I'd need to draw in where like the kind of booby window is going to be. And for the skirt, I am going to have a look at the reference image again because it's a little bit too long at the back potentially and a little bit too short at the front. So I think that I'll just make some notes to the front and I will cut off the back. So I, I think the first thing I'm going to do is figure out the skirt to figure out, okay, what is the weight issue sort of situation before I try cutting out the boob keyhole. <laughs> uh, yeah, keyhole, that's what it's called, not a boob window. Um, and I already know that what will need to happen is because this will be, obviously there will be, there is seam allowance in here. Um, but I have a feeling that once I cut the, the keyhole, um, this is going to be too loose. So I'll need to take this in. And so I know when I'm making it that I will need to, um, make sure that I cut that with, you know, that happening correctly. Um, so yes, <laughs> it's interesting. I mean, yes, pink and red very much on on uh, on brand um but yeah it's it, mock-ups are meant to look terrible right and the base layer of her outfit is very very similar to this um i will also need to draw on where the over 
the the over fabric is going to go so there is basically this entire thing is black and then the skirt the sleeves and part of the bodice is actually a it has on top of that the white sparkly fabric with a black net over the top uh, but there is a section basically here and all around the waist which is just plain black because it but it number one I would imagine that it's much more comfortable with the corset on top of that not rubbing your entire body with the netting um, like pushing into it and also the bulk so I will also be doing that um, but yeah this the sleeve is really really comfortable um, I will be doing this all in stretch which is not my normal uh, my normal thing but uh, it will it will work so yeah okay let's fix the skirt and then I will check it back in with you when I um, when I've done this section as well I know don't you just love the hair so here is the look of the under bonnet, like the under suit, under bodice. I think it's just because I'm very booby, <laughs> uh, which is interesting. Uh, I have cut out the keyhole and I think I've got about the right shape and size. Uh, it has a little bit of room for a small seam, which is what I need. Uh, I have discovered that I will need to take in the back, so that will be the next thing I need to do. Just to kind of give it the smooth kind of look that I'm meant to be going for. But overall, I'm pretty happy with how this is looking. Um, I know that I need to lengthen the skirt in the front. I've cut off the back, thanks Terry for helping me figure out the proper length of that. So I have kind of marked where I need to add from, uh, and it's about, it's about, eight nine centimeters from the center front down which sounds like a lot but it's just it's it's way too short at the moment it should be touching just above my knee when I'm standing up straight so it's a little bit too short so I'm gonna make some final changes to the bodice side of things uh, like adding the dart in the back and make sure that I can get my head in and out of this still I should be able to um, and yes I've cut off the sleeve so like the excess on the sleeve so that's all fine and I have marked out and I'll need to mark up the back I just can't reach uh, with my little arms while well, it's on my body uh, where the placement is of that overlay material um, that will be like sewn down so essentially what I'm going to do is I'm going to sew it on top of flat line on top of this and like just kind of um, zigzag stitch it down on top of this, like just flat lining it. Um, and then I'll go ahead and do all the seams. So yeah, it's not going to be the, um, the proper way that it's been made in Broadway or whatever, but it is going to look like Jane or so I hope. I don't know, it depends also if I can get the materials with like what's in stock in Western Australia. So, and if you know about the stock in Western Australia for fabric, <laughs> you know that it's, it's difficult. It's very difficult. So yes, boobies, lots of boobies. Good times. I've decided that I'm going to wear a push-up bra. This is my push-up bra, um, just because Jane is quite a booby character. Um, she's the motherly, mothering one. So, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to stop yabbering on. I'll make these fixes, have some lunch, and then start on the, the mock-up for the bodice. With this beautiful hairstyle. Sorry for the crazy light. It's that time in the afternoon where light is just not great. Um, so this is my first kind of uh, attempt at the corset. And tried it on and kind of know where I need to fix next. Um, it is too big, <laughs> um, even for me, um, I had added a little bit too much uh, extra centimeters in the sides and in the back, um, but the back is looking all right. So I think what I'm gonna do is I have to change the cup size down. So I've cut, I cut a D and I'm gonna cut a C and then change up these two pieces. Um, and then from there, I'm going to put it on see how it looks and then uh, essentially probably taking the side up the top so I usually find that for me it's this section here which is too big um, just because I'm built a lot like a rectangle 
And so, like, I have boobies, but I find that, like, this section is usually too loose, and then my waist is just, it, it's, it's thicker. Um, and it, there's no squish. I, ha I have no squish. I have a very long rib cage and literally have like that much space between my rib cage and my pelvis bone. So corsets don't really cinch me in much, um, but you shouldn't be tight lacing anyway, in my opinion. Um, so yeah, look, it's fine. I knew that this was going to be the case. The corset is always going to be one of the hardest things to make. All right, so here we are at the end of day one. Not too bad, you know, not too bad for a day's work. Um, so I have replaced the the cups and the panels on the side. So I replaced these two panels on both sides and also the cup. So that's the C cup. And um, I haven't tried it on fully yet, but already I can tell that the cup is fitting much better. Um, I've kind of held it up against me and I'm like, yep, no, boobies are filling that correctly. So uh, tomorrow I will try it all on uh, after work. I'm also picking up a microphone tomorrow because she has like a little microphone that will sit on her hip. Um, so that's all fun. And yeah, I will then mark it up where the difference of the cup needs to be because it's like there's a black section on the bottom and then there's white with some lines of detailing going across that um and then i will also need to mark up where i'm going to cut the at the waist because it's a waist corset so it will finish probably actually around here-ish um and then i will need to draft up the peplums so i don't know if i'll get it all done tomorrow evening i think that's a pretty hard ask um, but I will get it done probably on the Tuesday um, so I can go shopping for fabric hopefully Tuesday afternoon um, I need to make a list of everything that I need because I need a whole lot of trims like I need a lot of black trim and I need like studs um, or a whole lot of googly eyes that I can spray paint a dark gray <laughs> like a dark silver um in some cases they're silver and in some cases they're black um i probably will go with the dark silver um and then she's got a chain that also goes across there which is silver so i have to try and find that as well um yeah day one <laughs> i really hope i can get this done in time all right, sorry I didn't film anything tonight. I was just like working and working and working and my darling husband Terry was an absolute champion and was with me every step of the way. He put me in and out of this corset so many times I've lost count. Um, so it's pinned on the model quite tightly because this is like two sizes smaller than me but just to kind of give the effect. Um, so it's now been taken in where it needs to be taken in. The back is looking a lot better. Um, I have added the piece that goes up here. I noticed in some of the Jane Seymour costumes, they are rounded. And then I was like, mm, well, the one that I'm basing it off, which is like probably my favorite version of Jane, which was the original Broadway, um, actress, hers, um, hers goes up and then down into like a point. So I've added that one in and that just gives me a little bit more coverage as well, which is quite nice because this is, I'm I'm very booby in this. I'm very, very booby in this. Um, but yeah, I've chosen to do her version of it because it also has this center part where I found that I think it was the British ones. They actually kind of, the, the cups kind of come in joined together. So they kind of come here, join together up and then go out. Um, and yeah, I, I just, I'm like, hmm, nah, I think I'll stick with this one. So what I need to do now, or rather tomorrow, because it's late at night and I need to get sleep is I need to change some of the seam lines at the front because where I've got three panels here, there's meant to be four. And once I draw those in, then what I will do is I'll go through and mark up where the detail pieces need to be. And I also will figure out the peplums as well. So yes, that's good. <laughs> that's all fine. So yeah, there's going to be a total of, um, there's three, mm, yeah, three peplums at the front and then three at the back. Um, I think, yeah, 
Anyway, <laughs> there's basically one per panel piece except for the two center ones. Those ones are free of them. And then on this side, it will have the microphone holder as well on the peplum. So that's cool. Uh, and then tomorrow I will also go fabric shopping. So join me on that adventure too. Good morning on day three of this adventure. So I have marked up all the lines on the bodice uh, because now it's fitting. And um, yeah, I need to make a second mock-up, which is not what I was wanting to do, but here we are. So I need to rip this to pieces, cut it all out, uh, cut the new, the new pieces out and uh, put it all together. Sorry for the dogs playing in the background. They see the camera go on and they go, yes, now it is time for us to have our moment. This is what I'm dealing with. Yes, yes, I understand. You want me to throw the meerkat. So back to this, uh, yes, not looking forward to this, but I need to make sure that it works. Uh, and as a reward, once I get that sorted, then I will be able to go fabric shopping. Oh yes, and here is my shopping list. <laughs> Good bit to get today. Uh, and hopefully I can get all of it today. That's been very optimistic, but mm, we shall see. Uh, yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of pieces to this and I'm very scared about working with the like pleather. Um, because, or vinyl should I say, because uh, I've never worked with vinyl before and uh, you can't really make mistakes with it. So yeah, I'm very nervous about that. That's why I think I need to do the second mock-up. Here is the second mock-up of the bodice. Uh, a few bits that I'm like, hmm, that's interesting while I was sewing it. And I'm really glad that I did this because it's allowed me to kind of problem solve some potential issues before I, you know, <laughs> attack the vinyl. Um, so what I need to do is I need to still do the peplums and I still need to mark out where the detail lines are going to go on this. But it now has the correct amount of panels on it, which is really, really important so that I can get it as close as possible that I can to Jane's actual outfit. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to step away from that because I can do that tonight, but I need to go and uh, get the fabric. So I've got my list and I'm about to head out and I don't know how long this is going to take. I'm going to head to Homecraft Textiles first because I think that's where I'm going to find the majority of the fabric. Um, and hopefully I'll have a look at their trims and their notions as well to see, but I think I may have to go to Spotlight as well and a few other places and I'm really not looking forward to it all. I've just arrived at Homecraft Textiles and I have a plan of attack. I am going to try and find the netting first because that is going to be the hardest thing I think I'm going to find, well try to find, uh, and at Homecraft Textiles is basically the only place that would have it. Um, so yeah, I'm going to try and find the right size netting or the closest to it as possible. Uh, there's a few that I've seen online that I want to have a look in and look at in person. Fingers crossed one of them is going to work. Uh, and then once I've done that, I will certainly have a look at the hollow fabric um, based on white and then get some black lycra. So that's my plan of attack. I can get the mesh as well, the black mesh for like the under part of the sleeve. Um, but yeah. That's the plan. I also need to see, look at their pleathers, but I don't think they have a large selection. Um, but I'm going to have a look at those. Might actually do that first. Yeah. Uh, and then I may have to go to Spotlight for that pleather. And, but once I get all the fabric, then I'm going to have a look at their notions and their trims and all of that. So let's go in and have a look. So I found the Neds. Uh, this one is almost perfect except it has like the silver and white weave to it and it's white um, and it's also $40 a metre. This was the other one that I saw online and it is much lighter but it's cheaper, it's only about $20 a metre and I'm thinking I'll probably end up going with something like this. 
and then dyeing it. So, yeah, because that's looking pretty good to me. Ah, oh, damn it. I just looked at the reference image again, and this is very close to what it looks like is actually on there. I'd still have to dye it black as well. <sighs> this one has like little flecks of like white plastic in it. I'm hoping that with the dye that will also take that. If it's synthetic it should. But that's... Blast. Alright, let's see what else I can find. Look what I found. Here is my sample piece from the piece at home. And then there's that is the same holographic it's just smaller dots so i could get away because it is underneath that i could have this one in the top and then this one in the skirt and then that means that the saving that i have on this one because i only need like a meter of this means that i can spend it on the other net we are back home and i have got all of my fabric the only thing that I'm missing now, I believe, is my boots, which I know where to get those from and uh, we were going to be going to the shopping center to grab some stuff anyway on Thursday evening. But I have everything else. Touch wood. <laughs> but uh, don't ask me how much it costs because, um, yeah, um, this is what happens when you do not plan ahead and you decide that you want to make a brand new cosplay that is from six uh two weeks before the convention um you don't get really any kind of discounts <laughs> so yes there is i would say that all up with the boots and everything uh i'm going to be spending somewhere between 350 and 400 dollars on this cosplay but I plan on wearing her more than once. I am very, very keen to make her and I have a feeling that she will be comfortable, fingers crossed, and she's one that I will be able to wear uh, multiple times. And uh, I hope that people will like her. I hope that I like her. So let me show you what I've got because it doesn't look like a lot, like me looking at it right now, but there is a lot to it. Uh, so come with me. So I've just kind of piled it on top of itself. <laughs> yeah. um, so these fabrics at the top were fabrics that I already had. Um, so there's the, the skin colored lycra for the underarms that will have the black mesh over the top of. I've had some black lycra, but I didn't have enough to complete the skirt, um, but I have enough to make the top half of the bodysuit. And then I have about, or oh, just a meter or so of this particular sparkly fabric. So this fabric, funnily enough, is from my dancing days. So it's about 25 years old, I'm guessing, 25 to 30 years old. And uh, I wanted to see if I could find something to match it, and I did. But it's the circles are a little bit bigger. But let me show you what I got from, I think, Homecraft first. So I got uh, this black mesh. It's just, I got 25 centimeters of it. It's just power mesh. They'll be going over the top of this, and that's the under sleeve. Uh, then I got one meter of the black lycra so that I have enough to complete the skirt. Then I have more of this. So this is what they have now. And you can see it's the same hollow effect as when I was in dancing, but it's a smaller dot. So I thought that was close enough that I could buy this and use this. So this will be the top and this will be the skirt. Um, and the reason why I don't mind that they're not identical is because they do have the netting over the top. <clears throat> now, netting. This is what I ended up going with, which was very expensive. It was like $40 a meter and I got two and a half meters of it. I probably only needed two, but I was not going to risk it. So what's going to happen is that the net will be over it like this. So if I have both of these, excuse me, if I have both of them under, you can see that you can't really tell. And keep in mind that this 
needs to be black. Oh my gosh, it smells so bad. It's so polyester and it has all this like very lovely little like sparkle to it, which I was like, I don't want that. But it, oh well, it looks like it's gonna happen now. A little bit of ex extra sparkle for six. I don't think it's that big of a deal. So I got that and yes, that. And then I also got this chain. It's like a plastic metal-esque kind of chain and it's absolutely perfect. I just got half a meter of that and I could not be happier that I didn't have to try and find that. And then I also got some cord for the back of the corset. So that's what I got from Homecraft. And then uh, in the mail today came these. So these are 400 eight millimeter half back pearls, which I'm going to have spray paint silver that I'm going to use on the dress. And I don't know if this is going to be enough. And then the last lot was Spotlight, which turned out to be more expensive than I thought it was going to be. Um, and I'm not sure that all the sales went through properly. But anyway, the first thing that I got was all of this bias binding. And the reason why I got bias binding is because I do not want to use ribbon uh, for the skirt and the bodice, mostly because there are a few curves <laughs> that the ribbon would just pucker on. So I decided to go with bias binding and I got some thin ones for the majority of the detailing. And then I also got three packets of the thick one, which is this one here. Can't really tell because it's black on black. Um, and the reason being is that obviously this is half, this is half of that, which means that when I do an edge, I can actually use the larger one and then put that on the inside so it's all really smooth and it looks really neat. That is the plan. Uh, oh, from Homecraft Textiles, I also got some eyelets um, and a little tool. Hopefully they work better than uh, the old version that I had that I can't seem to find. Um, I will need to try these out on a scrap piece of fabric. I also got some spikes. This is the only way that I could buy spikes. So this, this was $25 and I literally need like these six and then maybe like some of these. I might do these ones. Mm, I'll have to play around and see what looks best. But yeah, I need 14 in total. And um, yeah, I think I'll do these ones in the middle and then I'll do some either Oh, probably these ones actually. Um, these ones on the edge. I'll see what looks best in the headwear. But mm, $25 for all of that. Then I also got some black dye. And what I'll be doing this afternoon is dyeing the mesh. So, or, or the, the, the wonderful sparkly fishnet-esque fabric to black. Uh, I'll just chuck that on the boiler and, you know... Hopefully it all works. Uh, I also got some E6000 Fabrifuse uh, because a lot of the detailing for the bias binding on the bodice, because it's pleather I, and it's going to be boned and, and everything, I kind of just want to not sew it. I just want to glue it, I think. And I know I feel disgusting even saying that. But I think that that is going to be the easiest way and I still want it to be flexible. So I got this one and I have my trusty E6000 as well uh, for all of the little half back pearls. And then finally, I got some white vinyl. I could not for the life of me find the shiny white vinyl. Um, so I've had to go with this more matte one. This one was from Spotlight. Uh, the Homecraft Textiles did have some, uh, but it felt really thin and the one that looked more plasticky, I know I was trying to find something plasticky, um, it was see-through and yeah, nah, nah. I think I'd rather something that's going to really hold up uh, with the strain that this is going to have on it. And I just wasn't sure that the ones from Homecraft Textile was going to do that. 
So yeah, those are my fabrics and bits and bobs. And now I'm going to start some dyeing. I will then work on the pe peplums and designing the last bit of the mock-up. So that is done and dusted and I can begin sewing maybe tonight or cutting out fabric tonight or, you know, tomorrow. That is the plan. All right, so the mock-ups are now done. She is very booby. <laughs> Like, I I don't think I've ever had a cosplay where I have had this much cleavage and I am a little bit concerned because it is a family event. But in the same token, it's not like people haven't worn corsets before to conventions. Um, I will need to make sure that it's all fine. At the moment, like, there, there is no spillage. Like... <laughs> This is the truth of the matter. There is no spillage. It's just cleavage. They're just there and on display. Um, it will definitely be a lot better with the corset once it's all boned. Uh, at the moment it is, you know, there's only boning in the very back where I've got the straps to kind of reinforce those. Um, once these are boned, I think that it's just going to just feel a lot better than what it is at the moment like this section here is like should be more like in there um and hopefully it will be like that we shall see um I may need to make sure that there's some sort of hook um an eye or press start or something in the cups just because I really don't want them moving anywhere um and I I'm concerned that they may they will be quite thick so hopefully they will just stand up on their own um, but overall I do really like it uh, the little peplums I'm just doing I'm gonna keep it real simple because I don't feel like trying to make a different peplum for every single one so I've got a standard size that I will just put it put around um, and that way they kind of hit each other and kind of do, do the little sprinky thing uh, the skirt at the front needs to be longer. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I already mentioned this, but I, I will definitely make this longer. Um, because, yeah, that's just a little bit too risque. Um, but yeah, so I'm feeling pretty good. I just need to go ahead and make it now. <sighs> so that will start with the underdress tomorrow. And yes, that's a lot of boob. It's a lot of poop. I think what I'm going to do is when I put on the bias binding around the top, I will just see if I can maybe make it just maybe half a centimetre up and around. Um, just because, yeah, I'm, I'm just not used to seeing myself with cleavage. Um, I mean, they look good. I think they look good. Um, but I am aware that it is a, uh, family event and Jane is a booby character, but I'm, I'm not, I'm not sure. I feel very booby in this. <laughs> How many times did I say booby in that clip? Should go back, watch it again and do it as a drinking game <laughs> with, with non-alcoholic, the family friendly channel. Oh my gosh. <laughs> All right, let's get cutting real fabric so this evening I went ahead and unpicked all of the like underdress side of things and cut the sleeve into two so it's all in pieces but here is the issue that we're facing with so I have the net fabric after I used a full bottle of dye and it is not dark enough and in fact when you have it next to the black fabric kind of looks a little bit green almost definitely looks gray it doesn't look like black so and like when i put it over the white like it it, it looks fine on oh, it, it looks fine but it just doesn't look great so like that's what it looks like and i just hmm when i put the black bias over the top of this it's like very clearly not black so I need to get another bottle of dye, I think, and give it another full dye bath and like less water this time. And like, just try again. <laughs>
but like I, I actually don't mind all the sparkles it it kind of is working with the fabric and the cosplay overall um but yeah i've got the the black lycra <laughs> there i've got my two sparkly fabrics here and i also have the mesh and the skin tone for the underarm part of the sleeve just you know randomly something different uh, so tomorrow I'm going to grab another bowl of dye, bring it home, boil that thing up again, and while that's boiling I'll cut out all of these pieces because I'm quite tired today. So for the last hour or so I have been boiling up the net again in a new packet of black dye. I used a different type of dye. So last time I used a bowl of rip dye, um, obviously polyester. This time I'm using the uh, eye dye poly. So fingers crossed between the two of them, I will actually get black. So I'm about to pull it off, give it a rinse out, give it a wash um, and then dry it so I can hopefully cut it tomorrow. Look at that, good soup. Mm. Here is the black lace net thing. I'm tired. Uh, yeah, it dyed black enough. And uh, so that is the, the lycra and that is the net. And that's the net over the white sparkly. And you can see that the plastic little bit within the netting is uh, still there and I kind of like it. It kind of adds sparkle, which frankly for this costume is absolutely on brand. So happy days. I get to cut this tomorrow. Also, here's a dog. And here are my shoes and there's another dog. Hey Lacey, who's a good girl? Um, but yes, got these shoes tonight. I knew exactly where they were. They're 30 bucks. And they're just perfect and they look really cute on so I will bling them up and those will be my shoes and they are very secure and quite comfy so hopefully my feet will not you know be too sore during the convention because heels good morning and welcome to working on Jane uh, today will be all about cutting out and starting to work on the under dress and hopefully get as much of that done as possible I'm going to start off by actually trying to spray paint these so these are the half fat pearls there's 400 of them here and I do not think that it's going to be enough um, I was like that's not a hundred and then I opened one of the packages and yeah, it was 101. So <laughs> I am very, very concerned. Um, I have already spoken to the seller of these um, and I have basically reached out and said, hey, if I need more, can I drive up to your house and get them because it's time sensitive? And they said, absolutely not a problem. So um, I will be uh, spray painting these so I have them ready to go hopefully <laughs> for this afternoon. I live in positivity land where I am at a point where I can start putting these on this afternoon. I don't know if that's actually going to happen. We shall see. So this is what 400 of those half pearls look like <laughs> out. <laughs> you can see how I don't think I've got enough. But I'm going to go ahead and spray paint these and I'll let them dry and then I'll put a gloss over the top and then I will see how far this can go. That will give me a bit of an idea of how much more I will need. Ta -da! So here are all the pieces of the underdress compiled together, pinned onto the dress form. At the moment it looks like a swamp monster, but that's okay because we're gonna start working on her very soon. What we're gonna do is I'm gonna start with the skirt first. So I need to flatline the net and the sparkle fabric together, uh, just so that they're laying flat before I do up the seam, and then I'll do the seam for the lining layer, which is lycra, and then I will connect the two at the base. I'm trying to decide whether or not I'm going to do that with a seam on the inside or whether I'm going to leave the seam raw on the outside and then just do the bias binding over the top. Might do that because it will mean that it will lay flatter and it will be about a centimetre longer. Oh well, such is life. A centimetre is not too bad. Um, and then I will then do the lines up as well. Well, I need to do the lines up before I do the bias binding around the base. Anyway. 
I'll figure that all out. I have the 400 half domes now spray painted. That's what 400 of eight millimeter pearls, half pearls look like. So definitely not enough. Uh, but we're going to see how far this gets me on the skirt because that will give me a good idea of how much more I need uh, because I need enough for obviously the skirt and then also for the bodice. There is none on the sorry, corset. There's none on the top of the underdress, so that's good. But uh, yeah, I underestimated. <laughs> Welcome to the next day where I have just finished ironing the last bit of the skirt. The skirt is now done as a base so i was gonna start like rhinestoning but really it's like those little half shell things i was gonna start doing that at this point in time but i think what i'm gonna do is i'm just gonna make the top connect it all um just so i've got like the the base dress done um and then we'll see where i'm sitting at and then i may start doing around the base of the skirt it really doesn't matter too much whether it's connected or it's not connected because there's there's ways that I can work around it. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that. But like, I'm very happy with how the skirt is looking. Um, the fabrics were a little bit different um, for me to work with. Um, the net is very, very plastic. <laughs> so plastic. Um, and to the point where it's very hard to iron it because it starts to... Uh, actually like melt um and then the sparkle fabric is like don't put an iron directly on top of me and the lycra is like <laughs> you want to try and iron me <laughs> just to try it so working with those three fabrics has not been fun um i'm also you know i don't usually wear um stretch fabrics or make my cosplay out of stretch fabrics so it's always a little bit challenging when i'm working with fabrics that i have never really used before or I've got very limited knowledge of using which is this entire project because I've never sewn vinyl before and I'm about to do that in the corset. So let's get the rest of the base one done just so I've got that first layer complete and the bodice hopefully will not be too complicated so wish me luck. Check in time. I realize that I'm doing a terrible job of recording my process for this because literally I am con crunching and I am just like, get it done. So this is where I'm up to. I have now done the sleeves um, and they are the two tones. So they've got the little black um, mesh with the skin tone underneath it with the uh, sparkle fabric with the netting over the top for the main of part of the sleeve is little details like this that I really enjoy to making because of the fact like I'm like yeah I paid attention to that rather than making all the sleeve just this one version like one sparkle and net which you know would have been the easy way but you know just having a look so closely at the costumes I, I found this out and I was like yeah I've got to include that um, and yeah, it's, it's fun. I mean, it makes sense. It means that like when I'm moving my arms, it's not going to rub up against the corset and stuff, which, you know, I can tell that this net would get stuck on like the beading and stuff. So I totally understand why they did that. But yeah, oh, I love it. I love it when I'm making a cosplay and they're like, oh, that's why they did that. Cool. So yes, uh, so the next thing I need to do is I need to do the bodice of this. I am going to stop here for a second, have some lunch, and then this afternoon I'm going to whack that out uh, and then connect it all together. And then hopefully I will have the base underdress done by this evening and I can start gluing on the many, many studs. All right, here is where we are up to with the bodice. Uh, so I've overlocked all the outside edges of the front and the back, um, basically putting the pieces of fabric together and I've zigzag stitched along here um, at the front. So I was going to try and overlock this, uh, but unfortunately it's just not going to work and I don't want to mess it up. So I'm going to zigzag stitch this first. And I also need to put in the dart at the back here just to kind of give it a little bit more of a structural support um, because otherwise it's just too big around the neck. 
uh, yay, more cups. Uh, <laughs> the actual, like, proper costume actually has a zip in the back of the bodysuit, or the underdress, should I say. Um, oh. But I am not doing that. I literally am just slipping it over the top of my head. So, yeah, I'm just doing it the nice, easy way since this is all stretch fabric. So, one thing about stretch fabric that I find is that when you try and do any kind of detailing work or, like, sewing just in general, <laughs> like, trying to get these straight without it all becoming bubbly and puckering, you definitely need to do some kind of um, tear away behind it just to give it some structural support with stitches. Um, it's just what I found. It's what I do. I don't know if it's correct, but, yeah. It works and makes things look pretty, so that is what I'm doing. So I will check back in once I've done that and that, and then I have hemmed this part, sewed the seams together up here and probably here on the sides as well, and then do the neckline uh, because then the bodice itself will be done and then it's just a case of adding the sleeves and then it will be adding the skirt and then it's done i may even gather this down a little bit just to uh, bring it down slightly lower because the corset is quite low so here is the base dress now complete a uh, few things that i am unhappy about the main one is the kind of bridge so to speak, um, I've ironed it. It's looking a little bit better than what it was originally, but I think what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to get some black interfacing and iron it across just so that it's got a little bit more structural support in it uh, because it's doing this weird kind of bubbly thing, which makes me very upset because I'm like, the rest of it is... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm very happy with the rest of it, actually. Um, I've paired it with some like wide fishnet stockings that I had, which are really good and quite close. Puppies playing in the background, they want to be on camera. Uh, and I've got my boots on as well. So yeah. So I think what I'm going to do for the rest of tonight is I'm going to start gluing on the little uh, rivets or, you know, studs or whatever uh, to the skirt. Um, I'm not going to start the corset. I want to do that fresh face. Uh, and if I run out of the... Thanks, Taffeta. Thank you. Thank you for deciding to squeeze your toy right now as I am doing this. Hmm. Anyway, what I was saying was that I'm going to start the gluing process and see how far I get around. Um, so that I have an idea of how much more I need to order uh, and then pick up and I will also if I finish all those then I will start rhinestoning the boots and the microphone so that's the master plan uh, but yeah it has a lot of good swoosh to it she's very warm I, I'm like, oh, make her because she's a nice, like, easy costume, easy uh, costume to make. And she's, like, short, so she'll be nice and light. And there's, like, you know, legs and, like, here and here that is not fully covered. And, yeah, I'm very warm. <laughs> yeah, not, not as breathable as I was anticipating, but that's okay. It's fine. Um, <laughs> it is what it is, and she looks pretty. So I have made a terrible mistake. <laughs> um, it, it's not too bad, but it's just like, oh no. Oh. So I put all of the studs that I had on the skirt. Uh, so that's 400 and it's gone around the bottom. And it's done the line in the front and the line directly in the back. And I measured it all. And I worked out that I can get uh, something like 92.75 centimeters per hundred of these studs. So then I measured the rest of the space on the skirt that I need to make sure that they're studs. And then I also got the corset um, mock-up pattern and basically figured out the measurements there that need the studs as well. And I realized that I need another 18 packets. So I need another 1,800 of these stud, stud, like studs. 
So there's going to be 2,200 studs on this cosplay or just under 2,200 studs, but that is the amount that I need to purchase and spray paint uh, and put onto this cosplay. I am very, very scared. Um, the good news is that they're not too hard to apply um, and they seem to be adhering really, really well with E6000, so yay. Um, <laughs> it's just going to be so much of it. But look, the 400 took me about an hour to do. Um, an hour, an hour and a half, I'm not sure. Um, so hopefully it won't be too bad. But what I have gone ahead and done since I'm out is for this evening, I've started rhinestoning the boots. So the cuff is basically all rhinestones. So I need to do a few more layers of that and then it's sprinkled with rhinestones all over. And I am almost finished the, the microphone. So I have one side left to do, but she has a little bit of a rhinestone thing going on in her microphone. I think also she has like a white glittery microphone. That's not going to happen, but I have got the rhinestones. So yeah. Oh, I should go to bed. It's been a long day, but I managed to get a whole lot of the cosplay done, which I'm very, very happy. Um, and yeah, tomorrow I'll start working on the corset. I'm not scared at all. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching part one of making Jane Seymour from the musical six. The second part will be released a week after this one has been. So please make sure you have subscribed and you've got the notification bell turned on so you don't miss that one. I'll see you next time.